Hello, I'm Sak from PDP Cycling. Today, let's do some nerdy stuff. Right, let's change the screen a bit. Okay, here I have Ibis Ozo, a newest e bike from Ibis. And today, let's do some suspension kinematic analysis. Right, let's get into it. I use SolidWork 2022 and I took um, the photo from IBIS website and this one um, you know I use the information from IBIS website which gave me some information about the shock length so I put the shock length at 205 millimeter and then I do the drawing all the thing you know yada yada and here, as you can see, the length for the chain stay uh, effectively is 460, but in reality, it is 444 from IBIS itself. So I had to do some, you know, correction in order to get a very close number as much as I can. Um, anyway, um, for the CG of the rider, um, it's about 110 centimeter from the ground but because the length here is 56 millimeter here for some reason I don't remember why but I had to put that number here so relatively um, it's still 110 centimeter from the ground so 1100 anyway and this number is consistent to trail POV um, another youtuber so I try my best to get a you know the most you know um, the best calculation I can so let's um, dive into it right so for the anti squat the high anti squat of this bike um, basically at sack value right here so as we can see it's about 120 to, and going down to something like 115 between the sack um, 20 to 30 percent so we probably have like you know really bite that pedal really well and as you can see that the anti squat maintain quite high through all the travel even at 100 percent you still get like more than 90 percent so this bike gonna pedal really really well and that's tend to have high chain growth um, compared to bike with you know anti squat um, you know regressive at the end. Um, for example, like some VPP design. So I don't know why this happening, but maybe the priority of this bike is to pedal well, despite of being e bike, which if you have seen for some time, e bike usually don't really care about high anti squat number they usually go for you know like just nearly 100 percent but anyway let's move on to the anti rise for anti rise the number is quite high in my opinion and around the sack it's just slightly below 100 percent and it's going down similar way to most bike and you know it's look like you know um, sinking pivot bike so in this case, if, as we can see that the number is quite high, even at 100%, it's just slightly below 90%, and that's still quite high in compared to like some other bikes that can have like even like, you know, 0% sack, or sometimes they even have like negative number, which in turn is create the brake force, which interfere with the suspension, and that means it's slightly less active suspension, but not so bad, just like, you know, single pivot bike. And the bike, you know, should also maintain geometry during the braking. And so it's not going to rise, you know, when you go steep and, you know, you do, you're doing the braking at the steep terrain. So it should be good. Anyway, let's move to chain growth. For chain growth, um, the number is 444 at zero, um, 0% travel, and it's go almost 470 
um, at 100% um, travel. And the chain growth is about 6% chain growth or about 25 millimeters, so let's say one inch. Right, which is like uh, an average number for modern bike nowadays. And also this means we have, um, you know, moderately pedal kick back. So it's not like it's not going to be there, but it's not going to be too much. And most bike nowadays decide around this value. So it's roughly about between 20 uh, millimeter to about um, 27 millimeter of chain growth. So the number is still within the, the range of, you know, most bike. But if you take a look at sink and pivot bike, you probably have like at least, you know, 25 to 30 millimeter and that's um, not very good, right? So let's move on to leverage ratio. The leverage ratio has got the overall progression of 5.1%. So from this point to this point, it's going to be 5%, which considered very linear, actually. And for max progression from, from here to here, the progression is roughly about 8%. And it is considered mildly progressive from here to here, 60%, and it's slightly regressive at the end. So that means it's not going to be so good for coil shock because you're not going to have that much of, you know, bottom-out resistance. So in this case, I probably say it's going to be, you know, suitable for air shock rather than coil shock because you're going to need to... Um, some progression from the shop to support the you know the end of the travel right so bottom lines um, this is first e-bike from ibis so we shall see how it's gonna hold up and so far the all the reviews on the internet is pretty good but you know we have to see um, other people not just youtubers Right, and they also should be pedal really well with moderate, you know, pedal kick back. And the geometry gonna be well maintained during steep terrain braking. And the traction is gonna be just average. So, um, next is, uh, you know, the frame design has got quite linear. So, the re linear progression, in this case, is just 5%, so air shock is a go-to shock. And I don't think coil shock is going to be, you know, the way to go. So, you know, just my opinion. Right. Anyway, it's not a trending shock. That's good enough because I think trending shock is not very easy to find in Thailand. Right. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy some nerdy stuff. And i see you next time on the trail.